Hi guys, thank you for joining me. So today I'm going to make a bag out of, uh, um, well, out of fabric, obviously. I don't know why I said that. To um, hold my things. Currently, this is my purse, and it's going to be about the same size. But this, it's fine, but I just want to make something different. You know, I, I like making stuff. So what I'm going to do is make it with slots in it. And it's going to be big enough to hold my tablet sideways, okay? So it will be that wide and ish that high, okay? Then, I, these are the slots I want to make. I want to make one for my traveler's notebook and pen. And then I'm to make one for my cord case that I just got from Timu. I want to make one for this bag, which just holds everything else my wallet, my diabetes tester, and that, I'm just saying that's a diabetes pin for size. Glasses, keys will go in the bottom with the wallet, probably, and mask, okay? So it's going to be this wide, and it looks like this is the deepest thing, and this will be the biggest pocket, and that's okay. And this will be the biggest pocket. Oh, my phone, too. I need a slot for my phone. Okay. And then it's going to have, let's see how many. We got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven slots. Because that's the pocket slot. I mean the tablet spot. So that'll be eight slots. Okay. Now, I'm going to throw all this back in the box so I don't lose it. And I need to, st I'll, I'll write it down when I'm done. Um, how I'm going to divide the pockets up. Okay. Most of these will all be the same size. Uh, the phone one might be a little more slim. And uh, most of them will be, you know, that wide. But this one will have to be wider. This one will have to be wider. Okay. So I'm going to divvy up pockets to be this full width. And then... There will be one section with all of these slots, and then one section with a tablet slot going the other way. Okay? And I'm going to use this fabric. I like it. And I just got this batting from Teresa. So I'm going to machine quilt the outside. And, um, I, I, I might wait to do that to last because I need to make sure of the overall size. So what I'm going to do now is start measuring and cutting out the slots first. Okay? And I will pause it. And you all said you're fine with pausing. And I'll just quit making a big deal about it. You know, I won't announce, gotta pause, gonna pause. You know, like it's a thing. So I'll just get over it. And um, I appreciate the feedback on that. And uh, someone asked that I do show sewing. So that's what I'm going to do. Okay. Also, I want to show you something else while we're here. You know how I add extra stuff in. And I'll quit after this. I promise. Uh, I drew on my table with... And now I'll have to clean it up a little more with uh, alcohol. But, well, that wasn't even... I thought it was a mark. But magically, I've done a video on this. This is where my sewing machine is going to go, so I wanted to mark it. But magically, I, I, like I said, I have done a video on this. Dry erase marker erases Sharpie. And like I said, if this doesn't get it quite good enough, I can clean it up more with alcohol. I'm not worried about... Um, writing on my table. Okay, because I, I thought somebody might go, why is she writing on her table? So here we go. I'm going to start measuring and cutting out the strips. And the, I mean, for the, the, the pieces for the slots. Okay, and I will be right back. Okay. 
Okay, here we go. I've got all of the slots done. I saved one to show you what I did. And then I'm going to sew one. And I don't know if I can see. Let's see. We're going to make that straight stitch. I did a zigzag. Okay. And what I did was just kept the fabric to the right of the... Okay. So what I did was I figured out I needed six inside slot uh, dividers. Okay. I'm going to have seven pockets all together. Seven slot pockets. And I need... One of them to be two inches for this bag. And then the others, just to make it even, it's going to be... Oh, I hope that's not moving. Sorry. And the others, just to make it even, are going to be one and a half inches. Because I will need to, you know, reach my hand in. So I didn't want to make any one inch, because I thought that might be too hard to reach my hand in. You know what I mean? So, the bag is going to be eight inches high, finished and 11 inches wide and it might seem like a lot but when I go out I need a lot of stuff and then I I can't drive or I don't drive so I use public I mean medic uh, medical transportation and sometimes you have to wait a long time for them or I might have multiple appointments in a day you know, and then with medical transportation, I'm always late, so I tell them an hour before my appointment, and they allow an hour ahead to pick me up. So I might, you know, have an, an 11 o'clock appointment, but then I tell them 9, and then they say, okay, be ready by 8. Well, then before and after... Well, then you call them when you're done, and you might have to wait an hour for them to come get you. So, I mean, I have to be gone a long time, and I need a lot of stuff. Actually, I have a backpack, a rolling backpack that houses my stuff, too. But this is just when I don't need to go as far, or I know I won't be gone as long. Okay? I mean, I have waited for medical transportation for, like, up to my record is five hours. So, I need a lot of stuff with me. And it will be, it won't look like a purse. It will look like a bag. I don't, oh, no, I'm okay with that. So, it's going to be 8 inches high, 11 inches wide. The slot for the pocket, for the tablet is only going to be 1 inch. And then it's going to have all of those slots. 1, 2 inch and 6, 1 and a half inch. So then I made the, the outside slots will be covered in the outside case. And and this is not drawn to scale. And then the inside slots, the middle divider slots, I needed six pieces. One, two, three, four, five, six. And I have them all done, and I'm saving one and doing it for you. And I will show you. I have one finished. Okay, so we're going to, we need that in the middle. Okay, I changed it for the, the last piece. I just sew down one side and no this is not perfect you know it's not it's not like a quilt where you're gonna see the corners coming together or something you know it's gonna be a bag and I can't find my finger slot cutter it must be I must have tucked it or laid it somewhere handy like there I'll put that right there and I can't find it I do have, I don't know if you can hear me over this, I do have a tight stitch. I only have stitch length at two because I want, um, I want it secure. I want a nice, secure, you know, I don't want any loose or sloppy seams. So, and like I said, I trim seams as I go. So then, I... Turned it inside out. I will show you how I did that. You know how I, I said in the other one how I like my seams neat. Okay. Put the point turner in the corners. And since that doesn't have 
a seam across the bottom. Those did point neatly. Okay. Now I give it a little bit, of, and the seam is messing up my sharpie. Now I give it a little bit of steam. I'm out of starch, so I'm using steam. And I used a ruler to pull this seam out. If you give it a little bit of moisture, it will. It is easier to pull out. You know how I said in the other one I like this seam all the way out? Like this. You know, it's hard to iron that and pull it all the way out. So you give it a little bit of steam. And then, then I come under it and I'll pull it all the way up. And it rolls it out all the way. Okay. Let me boost that a little bit. And then that's... Neat way to do that. And then that rolled a little bit too much. There. And this probably isn't any more than any other anybody else needs in their purse, but the backpack is a bit much. For, for example, now I go to a therapist office and it's real close to me. And, uh, you know, I don't, and I walk. And it's almost three blocks, but I walk. Well, I don't hardly need to take a backpack. You know, but I might need chargers and stuff. Oh, I forgot vape juice bottle. That will go with my vape. Oh, man, I didn't make a pocket for my vape. It'll be okay. I'll just, you know, put the talk something else the sunglasses or something okay so there is our slot and then what I did was I want at uh, this one I got done and I will show you I want it to be like eight and a quarter I want it to be just a little bit bigger than eight inches because it's gonna be attached at the bottom so that is gonna take away some from the height It's a great angle. Cool beans, Carrie Ann. Glad you like it. So then what I did on here, and that's pretty close to eight and a quarter, right? So then what I did was I sewed it with, again, my presser foot to the right. Okay. And then I got that zigzag right up to the edge. So then that is a nice, sturdy, stiff slot divider, right? You think? And then, like I said, I will probably assemble this with all of these tops lined up in a neat row. So that looks good, right? So all of my slots look nice and even. Okay. So, I'm going to finish all these up and... Okay, so now we're working on that quilted front, bottom, and back piece. Okay, and I have figured out, fancy math here, that the side is going to be 7 inches long. No, from, yes, the, the sides are going to be 7 inches going to be eight inches high on front and back so it's going to be okay like this it'll be eight inches seven in I know this is not to scale but it'll be eight inches seven inches and eight inches so that's the piece I'm making now this front bottom and back piece and I'm going to quilt it okay let me move that hope it doesn't shake the camera because the cord's moving. So I added two inches. I don't know why. So seven plus eight plus eight is 23 every time. And I need that doubled. So that'd be 46. And I, I don't know why. Why I don't. I'm uncertain why. But I added two inches. And I don't need that much. But I just did. And we'll just 
to remit or tuck it in or something. So, so then, so I did this 12 inches wide to account for seam allowance, but I only need the foam to be 11 inches by 23. And then the, the covering piece over the foam will be 12 by 50. Or is 12 by 50. Okay. So we've got the foam is 11 by 23. And the, the outside piece is 12 by 50. So that's what we got here. And the foam kind of stretched and, and stuff. So let me. Okay. To get the foam down I'm going to show you how I'm going to place it. I'm going to pin it a little bit. So there and there, okay, you can't see what I'm doing. So here is the inside, right? And it's front side, and it's front, front side, or outside together, right? But I need to place this foam piece, which is only 11 by 23. And this folded in half is 12 by 25. And then I realized it stretched and got a little wonky. So let's find the straightest edge. Okay. I don't know why that got. Okay. We're just. And this foam felt kind of thin, so I doubled it. It didn't feel quite. It's, it's uh, you know, like. It's like. Christmas decoration kind of foam. But it's going to work as batting just fine. And I want that up here. And this end looks a little straighter. So we're just going to do that. Because I want this inside to be neat. Okay. So there. And it's going to be the full width. Okay. Okay. I'm just trying to place this so I can start quilting, machine quilting. Is, is that what you call it? Just adding seams. I haven't decided how I'm going to do it. I thought about doing it, you know, every which way, but then I think that might, that got stretched. So we're just going to fold that. You won't ever know any of this. And this needs to be 23 wide. Okay, let's measure. That's, that's pretty close. I'm okay with that. I might scooch it up a little bit. Okay. And it needs to be 11 inches wide. And it's not quite. You know, I was going to pin on this, but I don't know if I need to. It might be okay. I will probably regret it if I don't. This padding doesn't need to be the full width, you know, of the fabric. But I do want it caught in the seams. Okay, so there, we're going to call that good, and I will just work it as I sew it, because it's wanting to shrink back. And what I'm going to do is pin just the foam to the top layer, because I can't pin it all the way through, right? And then we're going to pull this up. And we're going to pin. And we're going to pull 
And I'm weaving that pin in and out a little bit because I don't want it to come undone as I turn it inside out. Okay. And then, I don't pin much, so you all are probably cringing. Okay. So then we're going to pin this corner. And like I said, this being, this being stretched out up here is fine. Okay. Mirror, better give it another one. Okay. I only allowed a half inch seam allowance for the side, so this does need to come out pretty far. It'll it it won't matter if it's not caught totally. It'll be okay. But I didn't want the bulk of the full width in the seam. So there. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna turn that inside out. And I'm going to line the ends up and shake it. Okay. So there. And I'm going to start quilting this. And I'm just going to start sewing. And I... I'll probably just do stripes. Let's see. This is going to go... And it's wanting to pucker a little bit, so I will have to pull it and stretch it as I go. So I'll probably go across and pull it taut and then go that way. So I will crisscross it both directions, okay? And I will pause you and get that done. Okay, so this quilting is going pretty well. I thought I would show you. Um, what I'm doing is I'm coming in just, I'm stopping maybe three, I'll show you. Just a few stitches in from the edge, right? Maybe three stitches in. I don't know how much width it is. And I'm forward spacing till the presser foot's behind. Okay? A uh, stitch, maybe. Okay? And then I'm turning it to come back. I'm just, zig I'm just uh, zigzagging back and forth. And then I just go all the way down to the end. Smashing it down good so it doesn't pucker. And then, you know, like probably three stitches from the end of the fabric. And then I turn it and I sew to where the, this seam, the presser foot will be, this seam will be to the back of the presser foot. Okay, so the seam is here. And then there's the backup. So I just go maybe a stitch or so past the last seam. And I'm doing that the same on all of them. And then we're going to come up this direction. Okay. And then to keep it straight while I'm sewing is this distance from 
the edge of the presser foot to the last seam is a little less than the full width of a presser foot. So then I can kind of, you know, I just can eyeball. And you can see it's not perfect, but it'll be close enough. It's okay. And then that's how I'm eyeballing to try to keep it semi-straight, right? And then I'm pressing it down as I go, so hopefully we don't have puckers. same thing here I'm gonna go just past the last seam and then rotate it and then come back up okay and I'm gonna do that all the way down okay so I'm I'm finishing up these panels. I made two panels for the sides and one panel for the tablet pocket and I'm gonna show you again how I'm finishing these top seams because it's really working well. So we're starting with a straight stitch and it's not zigzag. Okay so and I'm gonna end on that. If it's lumpy my presser foot doesn't like it. Well, no, I, I want that on top. Okay, I'll just I'll just get around it. Um, so I'm keeping the the right side of the seam. Okay, um, let me show you where I did. So this is the panels that I made for the pockets. No, for the slots, dividers, and I I folded them in half on their self. I stitched the side. I ironed them just like I showed you and now I'm closing this seam and I want this seam closed to be the the top because I like the structure of it so I was going to show you again how I did this because it's really neat also this sewing machine I just love it this is what I said was the singer heavy duty and um they have them at Walmart my sister got one too and she loves it and get this they have this one, you know me and my bargains, right? This one is a refurbished model. It's not a brand new one. New, they're about $200. And they have refurbished ones from the manufacturer, refurbished. And you can see it looks perfect. You know, it came totally intact, nothing wrong. Had all the bells and whistles, right? And the refurbished ones are 120 and mine has done perfect. Now watch me not uh, do a, as perfect a seam here, but I'm gonna I'm gonna shift it so I can see, and I hope you can see well. And that is, is that looped around there? No, it's okay. Okay, I just had to change the bobbin. I ran out of the bobbin in a good place. Okay, so I'm gonna do a straight stitch first, and then I'm gonna do a neat, nice, neat tight tiny zigzag and I will show you how well this machine works and we're going to go straight the only thing is it does get hung up on um, like lumps lumpy seams and edges and stuff okay now and it has a little thread cutter on the side and I'm started being meticulous about trimming stitches as I go and it makes life a lot easier then you're not constantly fighting strings I've been pretty good about it so now I'm gonna do a tight tiny zigzag right on the edge so we're going to keep the stitch length at two, we're going to make the zigzag at one and a half, and we are going to move the needle all the way to the right. 
And then that lets us still keep our uh, fabric, you know, more under the presser foot. And then I'm going to, and do you see how, like I said, the reason I'm doing this is I don't want that, well, that was a little short, but I knew that and it didn't matter because I knew I was going to, um, see, I didn't want that open flap at the top of my pocket, so I'm sealing it neat with a tiny zigzag. And this will let us go right up to the edge and do a perfect tiny zigzag right on the edge. And I love this sewing machine. I hope you can hear me. And then I learned if you come off the edge with your stitching, then you can get it with the nipper closer. With this sewing machine one. Well, that didn't quite work because I just said it, right? And now that is a nice, neat zigzag right along the edge. And that finishes that. And it gives it structure. Okay. So I did, this is a side, and this is a side, and this is the back slot for the, um, and did I show you this finished? I don't remember if I showed you that finished. And these are pretty straight. I'm not going to go the other direction because I'm afraid it will just make pockets. And those are pretty straight. And I think that's going to be the front. And, and the back got more crooked. But it's okay. I'm fine. I'm fine with it. Now, I need to see how wide this is. Because it needs to be 11 inches finished. And it is right at 12. Hmm. So I think what I'm going to do, which it might make it thick, I think I'm going to turn that under barely, okay, and then I will seal that in with a wide zigzag. So I'm going to figure out these edges. And uh, so this is going to be the front, like this, front and back. And then I made the sides. Now I have to figure out how to sew in all of the slots. Okay, I will figure out these edges and I will start sewing in slots and I will show you my problem. Okay? Okay. So I have, let's see if you can see this. So I did go ahead and turn that under and I did use a one and a half inch length and then I did up it to about three width and I don't know if your settings are comparable. But it did a pretty decent job of sealing in that raw edge. Good enough because it will be inside and this will be have slots so you know, like I always say, it won't see the light of day. So that is how I'm turning in the, the side of the front and back. And, I, and I'm going to show you. And I need this to be 11 inches wide finished. Or a little more. Let's see how much I got. I can just barely turn that under. Because we're going to be... But I oversized it too. It didn't need to be 11 wide. I just did that for the... To even out the pockets. Okay. So I will show this to you. Let me see. Make sure you can see good. And it's in the middle. And it's on three. It's one and a half, which is uh, not very long. And it's set on three, which is a little wider than I did the top. So you can see I'm only going to turn it in like 
just that much. And I'm going to sew on the raw edge to try to clean it up the best I can. And I was going to show you how well this works. It works good enough for me. Okay. Okay. I'm happy with that. I like it. Well, why is that grabbing under there? And I'm happy with that, and I like it, and uh, that should be close to 11 inches, and it is. There it's a little, I can stretch it. Yeah, it's right at 11 inches. So this is, this is my front and back. And I left this undone because I've, I've probably add a flap. And these are all my slots and this is going to be so these are the this is the width. Okay? And then the slots are going to attach to that. And the front. And I don't know how to do it. Okay, so I'm going to attach them to the front first. And then, hopefully, I'll be able to piece them on here. And I might have to hand stitch them at the bottom. I don't know how I'm going to do all this. But this is how I wanted to do it. I knew it would be complicated. I knew it would. So what we're going to do is... And I am going to have to... Okay, I'm just going to come in a little bit from the end. And I'm gonna I'm gonna measure I'm gonna put that at two inches. Okay, that's where my seam's gonna go. My first seam. And then we're gonna come down and oh I'm coming in from the end and we're gonna put a pin there at two inches. Okay. Let me see. Is it just that much in from the end? And that much in from the end? Okay, I like that. So then what I'm going to do is right here. I know this is kind of crude, but it's okay. I'm going to draw a pin line. And nobody will ever see this. Are we okay? And I'm just going to... And it's going to come down eight. Eight inches. And I'm going to come right up to those pin lines. And this is going to come down eight inches. And I'm going to draw. And that is where I need my first slot to be. Okay. And then we're going to come over from that one and a half inches. And one and a half inches. And the rest of them are going to be one and a half inches. So, now I'm going to... And yes, they vary a little bit and it'll be fine. So, now I need to start... And I don't know how, how I'm going to do it. I am perplexed, guys. Oh, this is the top. And then... I'm just ever so barely going to catch that edge. And then I will start at the top to make sure they all line up neatly at the top. Okay? So let's try that. Let me try one. Now we're starting back at zero. And we're going to keep that at two. And that's going to be center. Okay. Need a needle up. Put my needle to the right 
it won't want to do that seam or this bump but I'll make it I'll walk it if I have to okay and this is not a side panel is it no those are the sides And I'm just going to barely catch this right side of the seam for the pocket. And then we're going to come down that way. It, it wants to get up, hung up. The presser foot gets hung up on lumps, like layers. So you have to push it. Okay, and I'm going right there. And I don't want to sew that all the way down because I, I might need some of this scooched up to sew the bottom on. So I do not want to sew it all the way. Does that make sense? Okay, so there. So that is how our pockets are going to be installed. Just, let's see if you can see. Just barely catching that seam. And then that will, it will, it will, you know, it won't look too bad. Okay? And it, uh, it's even lined up neatly at the top. And then it's just going to catch like that. That's, that's why I made all these panel pieces simple and finished so I could just sew a tight seam. And then, like I said, I didn't sew the bottom because I might need to, or I will need to lift that up and catch it to, attach the bottom unless I don't attach the bottom and that'll be fine too you know okay I'm gonna pause you and finish this up okay I got the slots sewed in one side and this is not as hard as I thought I don't know why I thought it was so hard and I should probably sew on the end piece too Okay, no, we're not going to sew on the end piece. But I'm going to show you what I did. So I've got all the slots done. And I'm going to, what I did was, I now this will have to be the mirror side. But I laid it on here. And now this drew up some. Now I can stretch it. But it drew up some from the quilting. But that's okay. This is my panel that is going to go here and then this will be the tablet pocket okay so what I did instead of all the measuring since I tweaked it and adjusted it so what I did was I sewed no I didn't sew I took this piece and I centered it okay and I drew a line on here where each seam was and I stretched it you know I pulled it and stretched it and I drew a line where each seam was and then I bumped it up and I did the same thing I drew a line where each seam was okay and then I connected the dot the lines the top and bottom and drew a straight line and then I will follow that as I sew in each each slot now this has to go this way right and I sewed these slots on this side so I will have to sew these slots on this side too to make it even so I will this is the top and this is the top and this is the first slot so I will line it up and um, sew, 
Now this time, the last time I sewed on the right of the slot, this time I'll sew on the left. And I'll just move my needle to the left. And then I will sew on all it. And then it, it's this is not as hard as I thought. And then I'll just bump it over and do the next one. And then bump it over and do the next one. Okay? So I'm going to sew all of these slots on. And I will be right back. Oops, sorry, sorry. Okay, my daughter should be home any minute, and Addie likes to bark about that, so apologize in advance. So I figured I better show you what I've been doing. Looky here, guys. Looky there. It's coming together. So, I don't even know where I stopped off. Okay, yeah. I stopped off at, okay, this is the back panel where the tablet's going to go. And I stopped off at sewing those slots to the back panel. Okay. So then what I did. Was I sewed on the side pieces. And I just did those. Okay, like. The seam of joining them is just going to be my corner structure, and I'm okay with that. Um, so this one I did the front. That's the front. So, so I sewed the front and the bottom. Okay? And I sewed the front here. And I, I don't know why I didn't sew the bottom yet. Okay. Then I jogged over here to sew this because I know the back section is going to be one inch for my tablet. So I went ahead and sewed that, that end down on my tablet. Okay? And I'm going to do that here too. And... Okay, so here what we're going to do is we're going to sew this last pocket down one inch from the end. And it looks like I sewed it that way, which is fine. Okay, so I need to measure this. I need to move my presser foot to the left. And I need to measure this one inch. Okay. Mm. About right there. Okay. The front of the lap of the tablet panel to the side panel. Okay. This is getting bulky. And it should start coming together pretty soon. See what I'm doing. As well. But that's okay. This one's gonna be a messy one. Okay. Addie's been a good girl today. She's been in her bed on the table all day. And I don't think she likes sewing. Because she hasn't been resting very peacefully. But she hasn't complained. I just let her down and treated her with part of a hot dog. So there. That's what we did. 
and this thread matches pretty well. It doesn't matter if it's, let's see how bad it looks. It looks fine. It looks totally fine. You can't tell I've zigzag reversed and all the stuff. I got my room pretty well clean, but I needed to vacuum it. And then I was like, well, let me go ahead and do that bag before I vacuum. Because <laughs> I knew that would make a mess. Okay. Now I need to sew this bottom on. I can't tell what I'm doing. I'm lining the bottom up. And I'm going to pull it tight. Okay. Right there. Okay. And we are going to need to get this under the presser foot, however this water will let me. Okay, okay, okay. See what I mean? Like it got a little complicated. I'm trying to mangle it under there. Okay, I'm okay with that. Here we go. And I want that inside a little bit. Yeah. Right there. And that's too far over. You walk it a little bit. Okay. Okay, okay, okay. okay. Now I need to sew. This. Right here. We are sewing. Let's see, the front to, okay, that's the, no, I'm uncertain what we're sewing. This is probably a side, and I want this on top, just barely, just so I can see what I'm doing. Okay, okay. And I'm going to have to pull this in the back because I can feel a seam of something joining right here. And I'm going to have to pull it. I'm going to have to tug on the back of the piece to get it through the presser foot. Because like I said, the presser foot doesn't like lumps. Okay, we're over it. Well, I need this to be... Nice and neat. Let me pull this bulk up because I don't want to catch it. Okay, okay. Oof. Okay. Just fast forward if you need to. I, I do like... I don't know the application, but I do like the idea of this bag and I don't know look at, I mean I don't know I mean I like the function of it I don't I'm not I'm still not sure about how it's gonna look but it's an interesting project I'll just say that okay okay Now I still have to figure out a handle, and I still have to finish sewing this to the to the back piece. And I have to figure out a flap, because I want to make a flap for it. But we're getting close. So this, oh, you can't see what I'm doing. So what I need to do on both sides now is sew this back piece up. This is the side. So I need to sew this to this. And you can see it's lining up pretty good right there. 
So I'm going to go ahead and do that. And I'm going to move my thing to the right. You know, I probably could put that in the middle and then the press would be. No, it needs to be on the right. I'm sorry. This needs to be to, to the right and this needs to. Then, oh, and both of them need to be as far as they can. I mean, this needs to be. The needle needs to be to the right and the fabric needs to be pulled to the left. Okay. See how neat this machine does? You know, I, I didn't have this much control with other machines. Now, like I said, this machine doesn't care about thickness. It is super heavy duty. There's videos of people sewing through. Like, how many how many layers of leather can I sew through, you know? But the presser foot doesn't like the thickness, but the machine can handle it. You know, some machines bog down if it gets too thick, you know? So, this doesn't mind. It just, the presser foot doesn't like it. I hope it matches up good. If not, I can undo it if it comes out crooked looking. So I will pull both of them tight. And I want the side just inside of the back. Okay. I'm going to start a little ahead of the presser foot. And that needs to come up a little bit. It's going to pull forward, so I'm going to start back. Okay. Okay, and I'm going to start ahead of the bump, and I'll show you. So I'm going to go a couple inches, and then I'll back up past the bump, and then I will pull this. It's a little more manageable if it's already been sewn over. So I start ahead of it, back up to the bump, and then pull it from behind to make sure it comes through the presser foot okay. Isn't it neat how this sewing machine can sew close to the edge like that? Isn't it great? I would have never done this design with another machine. You know, now I know you can finish edges and just join them, and then that makes a, a good corner seam outside. You know, that's like inside out. So it it made it easy to go ahead and finish all of the pieces. Oh my gosh, guys. Looky here. Now this did tighten up. I'm going to have to... So the back and front... Now this is why I said you make the cover last. I didn't realize they were going to do that. And so the back and front are not as wide as this this seam but it'll be okay the, oh okay let's start filling it up where's my big pocket this this is the big one i think ah, ha, ha. let's see let's see ah great 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 this is my probably my next fattest one and my tn and my wallet, and my diabetes tester, and a pen, and my phone. Let's see where I can. I would put my phone back to back with my. Oops, with my wallet. Okay, and then my vape and my vape juice. And my, yeah, okay, we'll pretend that's an insulin pin. And sunglasses. Where are we going to put sunglasses? They'll fit in there with the vape. And then I still have to make a front pocket. Now, I don't know if this is even going to be, this might be too big and ridiculous to carry. But I like it. 
It's not going to be bad, is it? What do you think? And I like just reaching in and grabbing stuff. I don't like, uh, oh, my keys are going to go down. You know, I could, to protect those, I could put them in this zipper bag. In this front pocket. And I'll never remember they're in there. How about that? Okay. Okay. In there. So there's my bag. I've got to make a cover for it. How about that? What do you think? There. And there is everything. I just thought it would be more, or, you know, me being organized. So I just thought it would be me being or, more organized. Let's see. That handle can go down in there. And that handle can go down in there. And that can go in there. So that doesn't have to be so honking. To show you the difference, this used to be my purse. It carried my, this is when I smoked, it carried my phone and cigarettes and keys and money. I put my cards and money up front and put my phone and cigarettes in the back. But that used to be my purse forever. For a couple years, like when I worked at Toyota. So there. Now, it does look a bit much, but I like it. Now, I'm going to make some kind of flap. I haven't decided. And some kind of handle. I haven't decided that either. Okay. And I might go ahead and upload this now and just be, be done with it for today. I'm tired. Okay. It's been a long day. It's 5.20. I don't know when I started this. So I will put this video together and uh, get it uploaded tonight. But you don't need to know that because you're watching it. So there. Okay. Thanks for watching, guys. And let me know what you think. And let me know if you have an idea for the handle. And just, just tell me all about it, okay? Thanks for watching. Love you. Bye.